back to the Box Bet Pod episode four. Uh, we've got a big matchup this weekend, WBO Junior Lightweight Championship bout. Jamel Herring is the champ. They're fighting in Dubai. He's facing off against Carl Frampton. They made weight on Friday, and they're ready to go on Saturday. Vlad, are you excited about this fight? Because I am. Well, I'm excited about the fight for a few reasons. I mean, it's a, it's a true 50-50 fight, and then it's a world title fight, so we don't usually see many of those. The uh, interesting thing, you know, and in, in, in what we talk about is when we look at the odds, the odds opened with the Jackal Frampton being as a slight favorite and uh, Herring coming in as an underdog, and that has flipped this week. So a lot of money has come in on Jamel Herring, making him now the small favorite and making Carl Frampton pretty much even money. So I'm curious if from now until fight night, which is really in a few hours, if that's actually going to, the pendulum sw- swings back and, and makes Frampton more of a favorite. I, I can't imagine Frampton at even money or, or plus money. Um, you know, it could be too good to, to pass up for some folks that, that know boxing. Box Bet Pod welcomes Lamont Roach Jr. here. Glad to have you here because we're previewing uh, a fight that you know a lot about one of the contestants in Jamel Herring. And, you know, you yeah. fought neck and neck in a championship bout against him. Um, he's up against Carl Frampton defending his title, which seems like a fight that's been like kicked down the road. That can's been kicked down the road for a while now with, you know, uh, rescheduling and all that stuff. But we wanted to get your, um, expert opinion on this fight and not only that, but you know, what's going on with your career, how it's going with golden boy and all that good stuff. And so we, we just caught up with you briefly on, on what Jordan Roach is doing, your younger brother, uh, in the nationals, but how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good, man. I've been in the gym nonstop, uh, working. I've been working hard. Um, so, excuse the noise in the back, but um, I've been. Hi, right, mom. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working hard, man. Uh, you know, I just been getting ready. Like since my last fight, as as like as people can tell, whoever saw it, whoever didn't see it and heard about it, you know, I'm ready. Um, I told Golden Boy that I really didn't need, uh, you know, a, uh, what you call it, a tune-up. Tune up. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really need a tune-up. Um, you guys can tell, like, when I was in there with Jamel, like, I don't I don't need those type of fights. But uh, for the, at the time being, it was, you know, difficult with COVID and everything like that. So I understand. And it was really – it felt good to get back in the ring as well because, um, you know – and I was very fortunate to get back in the ring because a lot of people weren't fighting at the time. So, um, you know, shouts out to them. My career is exactly where I needed to be um, with the Jamel fight. We just let it, you know, slip off the hook a little bit. But don't worry. Um, I'll be back for sure. Um, and I, I know that the championship fights, those are those are in line. What's, what's ahead uh, or what's lined up for me right now is either a fan favorite which is going to be exciting or, um, you know, a champion. So, and that's what we're shooting for. And that's you, what we want to do. You want to break some news right now? No, nah, not yet. I, I, I honestly, honestly, I don't have any concrete news, so I, I can't, but, you know, um, I just want to thank Robert Diaz, uh, especially because I know he believes in me. Um, Eric Gomez and Oscar De La Hoya that I, I know that I, I know that the next one will be very good. So b- before we break down this fight, and, we, and, and by the way, we can't let you leave without giving us your official prediction on how the mm-hmm. fight's going to go this weekend. Since you brought up the the Herring fight, uh, you had him. You had him hurt. You had him hurt in the 11th. Yeah. You almost got him again in the 12th. Um, as you replay that fight back, what, what goes through your mind? Uh, you know, just it's, it's a learning experience. And, uh, you know, they aren't going to give you anything, you know, um, Going into the fight, you know, it statistically the odds are stacked against me. Um, it's a top ranked show. Uh, it's uh, it was taking place in a uh, area where Jamel is familiar with in uh, California. It was a uh, what Veterans Day weekend. He's an ex marine, or well, he's you know he's a marine, and you know he's heavily celebrated. So you know this. It's cool. We know that we knew that we couldn't walk in there thinking that we were going to get away with anything on the scorecards anyway. As you could tell with the with the scores being so wide. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh well, I had one um, judge, one judge had it 115, 113. 
one judge, one and, judge. And, and, and that judge that judge can see <laughs> that judge can see uh but i mean like even in the commentating with uh, you see andre ward like you know he saw that it was a close fight when, you know and when i went back and watched it i just think that if i would have stepped on the gas a little bit more earlier and then you know i could have completed the mission definitely i think uh one thing you mentioned is andre ward praising you and I'll agree with him. I, I would say it was around that. It was just nip and tuck. It was that 115, 113 type of score. And he saw in you what, what a lot of us saw, that you're just right on the cusp. And so I think, you know, you're still in the top 10 of the WBO. Um, you're mm-hmm. still in that conversation, but you're in a very uh, talent-rich division. And yes. so when you fall back down and you're just at the cusp, how how difficult is that for you to be like, all right, man, I was at that number one, con- you know, contender spot. Yeah. I had the fight in my grasp. I maybe could have done a little bit more. I've I've told you, we spoke after, I thought you could have done more. I've seen it in your capacity to do more. I thought you mm-hmm. could have stepped on the pedal and, and won that fight. Um, you know, the, the, where the chips fell, they did. But now you're in a to- uh, talent-rich division. Where do you go from here? You're at number eight now officially uh, for the WBO who are you looking at? I mean, you know, aside from the top title contender now, Carl Frampton with Jamel Herring, but you got guys like Amber, Abraham Nova, uh, Gabriel Flores, you know, names like that that people know. Uh, are you yeah. eyeing anyone? Um, eyeing anyone? I want to say I'm eyeing those guys because I don't think they are where I am. Mm-hmm. Um, but if the fight is presented, it, it has to be like, it has to be a lot of stake. You know what I'm saying? It has to be you know, a title eliminator or anything like that, because um, according to me, my career and their career, I'm here and they're there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, you know, I'm not dissing them or nothing like that. I just, you know, it's, you know, it's levels and the way you work your way up and stuff like that. I just don't think those guys are there. Um, Honestly. And, um, you know, uh, I think if those guys were to jump the gun and fight any champion, I don't, I don't think they'd be any champion at 130. Um, the guys I'm eyeing are the are the champs or the guys that held championships at 130 and that are still there, um, such as like uh, Jojo Diaz or you know those guys that are on my level. To you know those are the fights that's gonna hey if if I fight them the sanctioning bodies are going to be like, hey, we might as well make this a title eliminator right. or, you know, something like that. Um, Roger Gutierrez just won a belt. He's with Golden Boy. Um, that fight's easy to make. I don't know where I am in the WBA, but uh, we love to fight him or any anyone that anyone that puts us there, you know what I'm saying, uh, whether it be a eliminator or anything like that. Um, other than that, the other champs are tied up. They're fighting like Jamel. Um, Oscar Valdez is free. Uh, he's free. I wouldn't mind fighting Oscar Valdez. Right. You know, uh, so it's a lot of, it's the IBF is vacant. So maybe, a, you know, an eliminator for that or, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's, it's that area is where I want to fight and, and where I should be fighting my next fight. Um, <laughs> From from what I hear, right. Okay. Well, I, th- I think you've shown. I mean, you're at that caliber, so you know you go neck and neck with the champ. I mean, like you said, there's no reason for you to go down and be like, all right, well, I'm gonna start back at you know the right. number twenty contender or whatever it is. Um, mm-hmm. But does does it ever play in the, the two questions for you? Does it ever play in your mind, just from a fighter's perspective, the network or the promotional? issues because some of the guys I named are top ranked guys or if you go you know Chris Colbert or Xavier Martinez those guys are mm-hmm. on the other side of the street you know or for whatever what it is um does that ever play into your mind or are you just looking to step up against the next uh, best guy not really um that doesn't play in my mind I know how uh, I know how business works you know what I'm saying um so if it can get done it would there's like there's definitely a, a thing as the other side of the street but you've seen it maneuvered around before, right. you know what I'm saying? So it can happen. And if, if it happens, that's what, that's what we would like, like, um, like, like a Chris Kobe, because he has the, uh, what the intern the championship. Intern, and I think they want to, I think they want to fight Roger Gutierrez. So, you know, it's, that's what I'm saying. Like things might play out differently, but that's why we have options. 
The other question in that is you worked with Jojo Diaz, I believe, sparring right before the, the Herring fight. How was that work? Oh, that work was good work. That was that was really good work. It uh, actually helped me get ready for uh, some some good fights. Um, I think the the one other time I was getting ready for Jonathan Akindo, mm -hmm. and I sparred him. So yeah, it was really it's really good work. Um, I'd be happy to share the ring with him. He's cool. Like I don't have any problems with him or anything like that. Um, I, we speak from time to time and stuff like that. So you know, but at the end of the day, it's business and when. When he get in there or when we get in there, if we get in there, I'm going to beat him up. But he's still going to be cool. Right. All right. Yeah. So, so Lamont, we, we, we need to pick your brain here, okay? So, big fight this weekend. If Carl Frampton calls you right now and says, Lamont, how do I beat this guy? What are the keys to victory for Carl Frampton to beat Jamel Herring? Knowing that Frampton is coming up in weight, small in stature compared to Jamel, how does he beat him? Uh... If he called me, I tell him. I tell him I can't tell him, but I I know he ain't. Cause Jamel's cool. Jamel, you know, we fought and stuff like that. But I know Jamel since I was like fourteen. Like, and, and he's a nice guy. He's never disrespectful or anything like that. And I want him to win. I want Jamel to win. So I wouldn't tell him, but I could tell you guys. If he called, if he called me, I would just tell him to pay attention to Jamel's last fight. Um. Okendo made it really uncomfortable for Jamel, um, even with, you know, the dirty tactics and stuff like that, because I fought Okendo as well. And, um, you know, I got headbutted plenty times, low blows, stuff like that. So um, the best thing would be would be to rough him up from the start. And once you once you start that pace, you got to keep that pace throughout the whole fight. Um He's very short, so like I said, like he he just has to take, he just has to get really really rough, and um, make it uncomfortable for Jamel in there, um, because Jamel's a champ for a reason, and if he's if 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 one thing he's gonna do one thing and that's exploit what he can you know he can do Jamel's good at keeping his distance, punching from range, um, he knows how to punch on the inside for a long arm guy, you know what I'm saying? So if if he's comfortable. It's gonna be a long night for uh, Frampton because he's so short. Like Jamel's the one of the tallest one thirties. I want to say the tallest. He's five ten, pushing five eleven. Um, so, I like Frampton. Frampton's gonna have a long night if he doesn't make it um, uncomfortable for Jamel. But it kind of piggybacking off of what Vlad said. Uh, not so much if Frampton called you, but what would you say being in the ring with Herring? What are his strengths? Um, that another guy just has to watch out for. Like, what does he do well? Other than what you mentioned, which is, I mean, he he works well on the inside for a tall guy, but what are some of the other things? I mean, he's been able to, you know, defend his championship, beat a top quality guy like you. Like, what are his strengths? Um, it's good at, he's good at understanding where he is in the ring. Um, as far as, you know, his stance, he's a southpaw, um, and I'm orthodox. Frampton is orthodox. He knows how to get that outside foot on the outside. He knows when to turn or how to turn. His arms are long. Even if he throws, like, a, you know, a little hook, is it might not hit you. It might. He might push down on it with, you know, so he's, he's, he's very understanding of where he is in the ring and how to use what he has. Like, it's not the prettiest but it works. Like he's not. Let me see. Let me see how I say it. You know how some guys are just like you know very fluid and um, athletic and stuff. I'm not saying he's not athletic, but he's not like a Canelo Alvarez. Alvarez. He's not as fluid or anything like that. But he he's good at what he does, and what he does is you know understanding his space, um, shooting and firing his left hand. If he has to fight, he's going to fight. You know what I'm saying? He has a good he has a good coaching staff. They and that understands Jamel and he listens to them. Like they 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 mesh very well. So we do a lot of predictions on the show. And I know Alex always asks, um, when this fight opened, Carl Frampton was a favorite. And the odds started to close in and close in. So the beginning of this week, actually, like over the weekend, Carl Frampton was like a minus 130. So slight favorite, and, and Jamel was an underdog. Money yeah. has come in on Jamel Herring, so yeah. now he no, is like, you know, they're almost 
it's almost even money for both fighters. Do you right. agree with that, or do you think one should be favored over the other? I think I think Jamel should have opened up as the favorite for sure. Um, being the champ, not just being a champ, but uh, the the height difference, the arm reach, like the advantage, and if you look at Carl Frampton's not his last fight, but the fight before that, he ain't look too hot. That guy was punching him, and he stopped him to the body. But it's it's gonna take a lot more than that fight and what he did against Tyler McCleary because it's not gonna be easy to get in. The, it's not gonna be easy to get in the inside, and Jamel gonna punch back. So I don't, I don't, I don't think it's gonna. I, I think Jamel should have been the favorite opening. Um, okay. Now, if people want to bet on Frampton because he was an underdog and they think he's, you know, Frampton is a great fighter. I just honestly think he's going to be too small. So so we, we kind of know where the prediction is going to go, Lamont. So what's your official prediction of the fight? I think Jamel Herring wins by unanimous decision. If he doesn't catch him with an uppercut coming in, coming in or trying to lunge in, like he dropped the guy Okendo, I, I see Jamel Herring hitting him with – one of those, but other than that, I think he's gonna win the. Let me say not. Let me not say fairly easy, but I I think he's gonna win a nice fought unanimous decision. Okay, so so Lamont Roach's official prediction is unanimous decision victory for Jamel Herring over Carl the Jackal Frampton. Okay, yeah. but okay. but look, but 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 <laughs> if he wins, I I, I fight him. <laughs> I I fight him. But either way, right? Either way, you know, I fight him. <laughs> what do you What do you know about Tyler McCreary? Because I was going to ask you about that. I mean, he's like five nine, five ten. I mean, it, does that fight play any like similarities to this one? No, because um, uh, Tyler McCreary is good, but I I don't think he fought to his uh, ability when okay. like he should have. Um, I don't know if it was, you know, when did he fight him? Uh, I fight? fought him. I want to say twenty end of twenty nineteen. Um, before before the COVID. Yeah, before before, yeah, had... before COVID. So it was like November, November, December twenty nineteen. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it was. I don't know if he was drained or anything. Or I mean, I don't know. I mean, Frampton's a good fighter, so maybe Frampton is you know a better fighter than him. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I just think that if he he didn't play to his strengths. And um and Frampton looked like he was, cause Tyler McCleary only fought at one thirty a couple times too. He's not the biggest one thirty. He's just tall. Right, 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 right. He's just tall. I mean, you could say the same about Jamel. He's like doesn't fill out to his size and stature. He's just like a tall dude. Right. Yeah, um, he's so, real tall. Um, but the other question I was gonna ask you is, have you had experience? Cause Vlad has kind of mentioned this the past couple of weeks. Cause we've had fighters that have experienced uh, COVID and this and that. Jamel had COVID supposedly two times and it, it maybe that's why he looked like you know less than himself against okendo does that yeah. play a factor i don't know if you sparred with the guys or if you've seen guys firsthand do you think that plays a factor uh, in Frampton? i don't i hope not no i don't think so i yeah i don't want to blame jamel's performance on COVID. i think that okendo is very rough i i've been in there with him for 10 rounds mm-hmm. he's that's what he does. He headbutts people, you know, uh, he hits them with low blows. He's going to punch in the inside. Like he's, he's that crafty, dirty fighter, like, you know, that mix. And he's just rough. He can take a beating. He can keep coming. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to blame that on Cole. I just think that maybe Jamel wasn't overlooking him, but he probably didn't think much of him because how small he is. And, Cause he's, he's small, but he's mm-hmm. got, he got some little rocks in his. <laughs> he, got, he got some hard hands, and he got a hard head. Um, you know, I'd love to get your perspective as a fighter. Uh, Jamel took a lot of heat after that fight uh, on he the did. broadcast, on the broadcast from from Tim Bradley, uh, that he that he quit, and uh, and Jamel was very upset about that. And Jamel, I mean, Jamel, I don't know if that was probably emotions sitting. He just doesn't want to fight anymore. After that fight, and he ultimately yeah. he just you know cooler heads prevailed. But what do you think of that? Do you think that uh, you know again, putting aside that you guys are on good terms, do you think that was deserved criticism or was it not deserved? Um, 
I think so. Either way, I mean, if someone said he didn't quit or someone said he did, when you look back at it, and uh, to be brutally honest, and I talked, I, and we talked after the fight. To be brutally honest, I think it was a way out. Um, but you know, to him, if he couldn't see, he couldn't see. But I don't think the cut was that bad. You have one of the best cut men in the in the business, in Levi. Um, and I think it was getting rough in there. So uh, I think they were protecting Jamel. Uh, and I guess the corner seen that as a, you know, like, you know, a way to secure, maybe, maybe, I'm just saying, it can look like a way to secure the fight with Frampton. Big money fight. Now, look, it's in Dubai now. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, it's, to be brutally honest, it looked like a way out. Um, because if you look at the fight before Steve Nelson, they had the same, they had the same camp. He had a terrible cut for all the rounds, for all the rounds, the cut didn't stop bleeding for all the rounds. Mm-hmm. He didn't say he couldn't see or anything like that. So, you know, you call a spade a spade, but Jamel's a champ. Jamel's a champ for a reason. Uh, if it would have been, if it would, it got stopped. It, it was a technical decision, right? Yeah, he was winning on all score cards. So I mean, um, I wouldn't advise my like I wouldn't do that, and I wouldn't advise my corner to do that because that's just me. But if if the doctor stops it, is if if you say you can't see when you you know when you can or when they was about to when they was about to wipe his eye, you could see you could see him like you know stop. So you know it's so you no know, it's it's just a thing. It's just a thing. Uh, I'm glad I'm glad he's still champion. I'm glad he's still fighting to defend this championship, and I hope he does defend this championship. All right. That's good stuff. Thank you. Thanks for being honest with us. Good, really yeah, good yeah. stuff. That's perspective that we wouldn't have, so thank you. Yeah. Yeah, much appreciated. That's why we uh, definitely wanted to have Lamont Rose Jr. here on the show because he's a straight shooter. He's been in the ring <laughs> with Jamal Herring's at that championship level, and uh, like Vlad said, that's uh, insight that we wouldn't get otherwise, so we really appreciate that, but uh, we're definitely going to want to catch up with you again as you have your you know, next bout announced and sure. as you climb the ranks back up to to championship status and big shout it, out it to won't Jordan be that Roach. long i could tell you that it won't be that long That's it won't be up. that long we'll be in- i'll be interested uh, observers for the herring versus frampton fight for sure all right thanks a lot lamont all right thank, thank you all right take care at this moment which is friday midday eastern time we're looking at carl frampton on at least on my bookie uh, plus 100 and Jamal Herring, I believe, uh, minus 115 right around there. So like you said, we'll be seeing if that changes and we will give our predictions uh, a bit of a breakdown. We've already spoken with Lamont Roach Jr. He gave his keys to victory. We know he's been in the ring with Jamal Herring. But Vlad, how do you see this fight breaking down? And at the end of the day, the question is, who are you picking? Wow. So this is a tough one. This is a tough one. I, I'm not going to say that I've been flip-flopping. I I, uh, I kind of saw this going the same way since it was announced and, and through the postponements. I believe I'm going to go with Carl Frampton, and I'm, I'm going to tell you why. So Carl Frampton is moving up in weight. So he, he's attempting to be the first Irish boxer to win a world t- a title in three different weight classes. So he's coming up in weight he's got a lot of disadvantages here because Jamel is a giant compared to, to Frampton and Jamel is going to have five inches uh, to him. I just think Frampton is a more superior fighter. He's had better opposition. He's been in big, big fights and I'm going to be a victim of recency bias. The last time I saw Jamel Herring in the ring, he didn't look good. And we asked Lamont if the criticism was warranted and Lamont, who is a supporter of Herring, is a friend of Herring's and has been a rival of Herring's, is, is pulling for a Herring victory, is predicting a Herring victory. Lamont said as a fighter, he said the criticism was warranted. And the criticism largely came from Tim Bradley that said that Jamel Herring quit in, the, in, in a way to, to leave the ring as a victor, as a victor with his belt because it was not going his way. Now, anyone could have a bad night. It really wasn't going his way. You know, Kendall made that fight very tough. So I can't unsee that. 
Um, so it is recency bias. Um, I think if Herring would have had an easier time with a Kendo, you know, perhaps I would think differently. Um, last time we saw Frampton, um, he knocked out I think it was Darren Trainer, and he looked really good uh, doing it. Frampton is a is is, is a star in my opinion. Uh, I, I don't know if he's an elite fighter, and he's definitely up there in age, but he's a star. The two fights with Leo Santa Cruz were super close. And um, I'm going to go with Frampton to win this fight. Uh, and, I, and I think people could, could make a little bit of money because of the odds on there. The, the other uh, piece is, so the official prediction for me is Carl Frampton uh, as a winner. But as a parlay piece, what could be interesting is Hampton... Uh, Frampton and Herring going the distance, which I see it going the distance. On some books, it's got like a minus 330. And Hampton, it's, I keep saying that, Frampton and Herring over 10, 10 and a half rounds is minus 400. Um, unless there is a cut, an injury, the fight's not going to end early. I, I don't think either man is going to stop the other man. Uh, it could be one-sided, but I don't think, uh, you know, if, so if it's, it's either a close fight or it's one-sided, but it's not going to be um, a, a knockout. So uh, unless it's a freak injury that happens, fight's going to go rounds. So it'll do 10 and a half rounds. It'll do 12 rounds. And I think that that's a good, that's a good angle. It's going to be a lot, it's juiced up. So it's going to be hard. You have to put, you know, $400 to win back a hundred dollars. That, that might be, that might be pricey, but there's a couple of heavy favorites fighting around the same time in Uzbekistan tomorrow on the zone. And I love the heavy favorites to win. And um, I love all three heavy favorites to win. They're all just, you know, budding superstars and former Olympians. And they're just, they're just great fighters. So part, you know, parlaying with one or two of them with Frampton Herring going the distance that could be that could be a way to make some money also this weekend. But again, the official pick for this purposes, going with Carl, the Jackal, Frampton to win this fight. Excellent. Uh, good bits of information there. I will say this may be the first time, at least on this level, that we're seeing someone the caliber of Herring, at least a champion, fight for the second time after having suffered COVID. So he suffered COVID and to a point you've made a couple weeks in a row, we don't know how that guy's going to look after. Well, we don't, we do know how Jamel looked. He didn't look great against Jonathan Okendo. And it could be like Lamont was saying, Okendo's a rough and tough guy. He's going to low blow you. He's going to headbutt you. Jamel, for whatever reason, didn't handle that well and didn't look good. Now he's coming back possibly on paper, even a tougher fight against Carl Frampton now we're going to see, okay, how is he going to look? Is it maybe just a one-off because of the COVID? And now he's feeling better uh, and he's at his top uh, ability. I would ask you, probably his best performance, would you agree, is the Ito fight when he won the title? Yes. Okay, so is that Jamel Herring good enough to be Carl Frampton? That may be the argument because what people are saying is levels, uh, ability, and maybe – them at their best, Carl Frampton is a world-class guy. Jamel Herring uh, may not be. But Carl Frampton is coming up in weight. Like you said, he's given up five inches in height, uh, eight inches in reach. Can Jamel Herring fight his fight, I guess is the question. He has suffered cuts. He's been bloodied up. So not out of the question to say, okay, it could be stopped uh, just for one of those things. But if we're talking about going back again to what Lamont Roach Jr. said, he believes Carl Frampton has to make it rough tough and ugly. And I don't think Carl Frampton fights that way. He's by CompuBox's measurements, not a high output guy for this division. I think he's below the average. Uh, so he's not going to bring it to Jamel. So we have to see, can he box his way, you know, in and out in spurts and, you know, can he dictate the pace to where he wants? I, I do think he has to turn it up a little bit more than what he normally does. Um, but at the end of the day, I think like you're saying, we're talking pedigree, we're talking championship world-class level. I won't go as far back to say and give him credit for the Leo Santa Cruz fights, obviously incredible fights, but I think that's too far back. Carl Frampton is not that guy anymore, 
But from what we've seen recently, I think it's enough, I will say. And certainly a good bet at plus 100, as I showed you off screen, I already put my money down on Carl Frampton winning by decision. I think it's a good a good deal. And um, I think it's going to be a good fight. Again, styles make fights, but also just the size of the combatants, you know, Jamel Herring and, and, and can he dictate the pace? And, you know, he'll tell you as well, but I mean, he's got a great corner. He's got guys with incredible pedigree that are helping him game plan uh, primarily Bo Mack and, and Terrence Crawford. I think that's a, a high class corner, high class team, and they're going to come prepared. And so it's not going to be a wash. It's going to come surprise Carl Frampton's, talking so much i know he's got the motivation of being like you said the first irishman to win a title in three divisions Uh, he's motivated from that perspective but in terms of him coming in and just wiping jamal herring out i don't think that's going to happen and i would bet on the 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 fight going the distance and the decision yeah uh great great points I agree with you that the Leo fights were, were far off, but the thing about the Leo fights is, you know, you made a reference that to, to Lamont Roach's point to beat Jamel, he's got to make it dirty and he's got to have a high output. And that's not his style, but against Leo, that was his style. And no one in the sport throws more, more punches than Leo Santa Cruz. Right. And he held his own and threw enough punches and countered and, and saw the punches coming. Um, which, which, which was really impressive. So yeah, he's not that guy anymore, but he is capable. Uh, Carl Frampton has said publicly that if he loses this fight, he will retire from the sport. Correct. Um, again, usually a reason for concern <laughs> when people have that in their mind that they're contemplating retirement, that there's a reason that, that you know, we, we don't know what's going through his mind when he's getting up in the morning to do road work. We don't know if he's got it. We don't know how he feels when a sparring partner actually bruises him and hits him or when he wakes up in the morning and he's feeling um, extra tired, we don't know how that makes him feel. And maybe he's contemplating retirement off of that. We don't know, but knowing and watching Frampton for as many years as I have, if, if he believes that, and maybe that's just self-motivation, he's going to put it all on the line against Jamel Herring and I just don't see Jamel as that kind of guy that can that can withstand that. I mean, yes, he's got the reach and everything, but you know, size does not always matter. And I think Frampton is the better the better fighter. I think Frampton, if he lays it all in line, um, can shorten the distance, can dictate the pace, and will do enough for the judges. Um, the fights in Dubai, it's a fair game. Anything goes. I'm going with the jackal. Yeah, and I will say Carl Frampton has mentioned retirement and kind of his plan even back then the leo fights i mean he's always uh he hasn't been shy about mentioning those things and so kind of to your point i don't think that him saying i almost think it's a more of a disrespect thing where he's just saying jamel herring is a great guy but look man he's not on my level and he said that in different ways throughout this buildup. he's not on my level i'm not seeing anything i shouldn't lose to this guy and so when he says look if i lose i'm retiring i think that means in maybe a disrespectful way, look, if this dude can beat me, I'm out. I'm not a, a shell or a fraction of what I used to be. Now, if we're talking about people, I mean, there's no, there's just no better person than Jamel Herring. And we thank right. him. We both thank him for a service to this country. And just, I, I mean, I, I mean, I follow him on, on all social media platforms. He's just a great guy to follow. He's, he interacts with people. Just again, a wonderful, wonderful human being. I'm so happy that he's a world champion. I'm so happy that top rank has done well uh, by him through his career. But there's levels to the game. And again, to me, Carl Frampton is just on a different level. We'll see. Go, moving up to, to weight, fighting a, a larger man. But again, it's, it, it, it's you know, and, and we'll see. The interesting thing is what happens after this fight. So, so we'll talk a, a second about this business-wise. Frampton wins. We're talking about a monster, monster event with Shakur Stevenson monster event was your course even stint possibly if not in in the middle east and in in, uh, in ireland and if herring wins he said he'll most likely vacate and move up to uh to 135 and in which case um shakur will probably fight for a vacant belt so business wise the fight with shakur and frampton can be massive for, for both guys it'll be a great payday for carl and it'll be an opportunity for shakur to 
you know, go to, you know, enemy territory and, and win a belt. It'll be interesting fight. And like you said, it'll be interesting to what happens uh, after, because we know Shakur Stevenson has been calling out everyone and this could be his first real chance uh, so to get. The question is, Alex, the question is, will Jamel Herring come on the show <laughs> and help break down? Shakur? I think w win, lose or draw, he'll come on. And I'll, I'll put my name on that one. So we'll hit him up after this one. And I, I think we can get him on. Uh, and he's, I've always told him after you, you retire, being an analyst is going to be in his, you know, in his future. He, he knows how to break down a fight and, and really engage people and get them interested uh, in boxing. And so, you know, again, shout out to both guys and, and we'll look forward to a really good fight and we'll see what happens. All right, man.